Hey, how's everybody doing? Let me get my mug out of there. What's going on, everybody? Oh. Oh. Charlie Brown. Halloween special mug. I always love the kid with the coonskin cap on top of the thing. Not playing on TV because of fucking Apple this year. Well, if this goes up this year, this might go up next year. It didn't play in 2020 on TV because fucking Apple had to buy the rights. You asshats. Fuck you, Apple. That's right. I do not own Apple products. Fuck a Mac. Fuck an iPhone. Fuck an iPad. Fuck an iPod. Fuck all that shit. Overpriced bullshit. But let's get into it here. This is the complete normal man. This is from Image, I think. Image. It's a sound of that. Superhero satire rocketed into space by his junior CPA father who was convinced his home world was going to explode. It didn't. He landed on the planet Levram. Read it backwards. That's Marvel. Where everyone except him had superpowers, he became the world's only normal man, befriended by the guileless, shit, brainless, kept in everything he has the ability to negate all known laws of physics or come up with a new superpower in every plot twist. But so dumb he can forget to fly in mid-flight, normal man's only goal in life is escape this mad world. Collect together for the first time in one edition's every single appearance of Image Comic Founders Jim Valentino's seminal parody classic. A satire that spans the entire history of comics while telling a singular narrative. You got some... Get some press, uh, 20 bucks. This ain't 20 bucks. Okay, normal man, real simple. This, uh, I think he first appeared in backup, like in Cerebus, the Aardvark. Jim Valentino, y'all know, I mean, my generation knows him, oh, Guardians of the Galaxy guy, you know, the actual Guardians of the Galaxy, not that movie bullshit. You know, Charlie 27 and, uh, what was it, Nikki Nova or Nova and all them, you know. Vance Astrovic, not Star Lord. Uh, he before that he did a lot of comics all over the place, and this is one of the ones he did. This was a, like I said, a parody. It, I want to say, it might have come out from Earnhardt Van, Van Halen, Van, Art the Aardvark imprint, but I knew Renegade Press published a good chunk of them. This is all those issues plus like a few other little fill-ins there, because once he finished the series up, that was it. Normal Man has not returned. I'd love it to happen. I just hadn't happened so. And I've been wanting to do this one, but this is one of those trades where I don't want to open up too far. This is America. We can do anything. And what it was is Jim Valentino just satirizing all these uh, comic uh, genres and stuff. First appearance was in Cerebus number 56, and he appeared in AV and 3D number 1, Cerebus 57. Normal Man number 1 came out in January of 84, so, and then the 2, 3, 4. He crossed over with Journey, which was William Mr. Loeb's series in 5, 6, 7, 8. 9. They had a Comic Con a souvenir book he appeared in. Um, 10, 11, 12. Norman Man 3D Annual number 1. Epic Light number 1. I don't know what that is. Another comic, uh, San Diego Comic Con souvenir book. Normal Man Megaton Special number 1. Normal Man... Captain Everything, which is also in the Normal Man, Mega, Normal Man Megaton Man special number one. Then, Normal Man 20th Anniversary special number one. The covers, back covers. Okay. And so you start off, but we got like a Fantastic Four group here, and they're telling the story of Normal Man. And it's like the thing said, you know, he, his parents thought the planet was going to blow, so they shot him on this planet where it's all superheroes, and he has no powers. It's, it is self-evident that this alien is a deviant, a social miscast who may undermine the very fabric of society. You four will be my first wave in my attack on this godless abbreviate aberration. And soon this normal man shall have to face the ultra-conservative emissaries of rightness, a fanatic four. Yeah. Oh, Valentino's an old school hippie, so a lot of, you know, jabs at the right wing and Republicans and conservatives. Funny ass little, I mean, really funny ass little series. Some great art. Sergeant Fluffy. I love Sergeant Fluffy. The Legion of Super Flurious Heroes. Super Flurious Heroes. Their roll call goes on for like the entire series. Oh, this. They're doing the roll call. Ample last. Yeah. Androgynous person. Liberator. And this is one where I knew the character. I might have read an issue, but I'd never told that. I sat down and read this entire thing in one day because it was just that much fun to read this. I never hear anybody. That's 
that everybody's talking about. And this is what I kind of want to focus on here, you know, movies and comics and stuff like that. You never hear anybody talking about. I never hear anybody mention Normal Man. And Valentino, I don't think, it's really brought him up in a long time. Mm. <sighs> Sorry about that. I had to get a sip of drink. And, like, you know, there's some Kirby machinery. Hold on, let me bring that in. See, some Kirby like machinery, of course. This kind of feels very, uh, very Kirby like. This whole page with the way it's laid out. And then they got the Crypt of Normal Man, which is going to be kind of like their parody of um, Tales from the Crypt. Sort of, kind of. And there's like, that's supposed to be, um, shit, Utah the Watcher. Tails calculated make you normal, man. To remember, mad, it's kind of like a mad thing. It's such a great little series. And so much old maid and trendoid. Oh God, old maid and trendoid. Look at that. That's very early 80s, yep. Yeah, that's very early 80s, trendy. Science is where, you know, the old weird science. Valentino was really good at, you know, taking other people's arms and kind of making it in his own. The Smelfs, supposed to be like the Smurfs. And, and also, um, ElfQuest. If you like ElfQuest, go look. Crisis on Elf Earth Twinkies. Give me a second here. Sorry about that. The phone. I can't control the phone still. Yeah, he just, whatever was kind of popular in comics or had been, he took a shot at E-Man shows up. You got um, Fred Hembeck. That's why maybe why you didn't see a lot of reprints because there's so many characters you got to get the rights to, you know? And after our ElfQuest parody, we get Cutie Bunny. Look at that. Cutie Bunny showed up. I'm Mickey Money. Let me get the issue of Journey. Journey is such a great, great series that nobody mentioned. No man showed up there for an issue. William Messer Lobes. Fucking amazing artist. Crisis? What crisis? Mm -hmm. This is 84, so that's what a couple years for DC to Crisis on the Infinite Earth, but they always had the old Crisis series, you know. It just, oh man. And I want to, I'm pretty sure all this old stuff was black and white. Oh, this is the roll call and he lost his place. He's got to start over. He was at the wise. Flat man and useless kids and Captain Everything versus the tight teens. The tight teens, of course, are the new teen titans. And it's kind of obvious. There's Starfire. There's kind of Cyborg. Let me pull that in. I forget this is so far away now. Look, there's see at the end. And they were popular at the time. Misery in space. And I wanted to say this character right here is supposed to be Jim Valentino with that hair. It looks like he did a series called Valentino. It's kind of based on stuff he did. It's, one, it's kind of an undergroundish series. Just like, like you yeah. know. Cerebus. I got Dave Sim to agree to it. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of times you can't get that. The uh, Marx Brothers. Well, let me pull it in. All right, over here. Groucho. Uh, Harpo. It was like Chico. Yeah. It's really cool. Oh, this. Look at this. Okay. That is very obviously. They're like, hey, what's going on, American flag? Howard Chaykin, which are really cool ass series that again nobody's really talking about. You know, shout out to really huge shout out to Uncle Jerk, Jerk Comics on YouTube. He covers a lot of stuff that I like covering, so it's like I love watching this guy's stuff. Really nice guy to talk to, too. I had a little chat with him one night about Rick Beach and some other comic stuff. And like one of these is a romance style. He just, he does everything in this, and it was so much fun. I 
Okay. Is this supposed to be Neil Gaiman? Look at that. Look at that now. You know, old Neil Gaiman, like, you know, Sam M. Before it became popular, Neil Gaiman. And it's talking about CompuServe. A lot of M, Megaton Man. A lot of N. So, okay, this is, okay, this is definitely the Megaton Man thing. Yeah, because Spawn all that's in here. There's Grew the Wander. Yeah, this is, that's definitely supposed to be Neil Gaiman. And we got Scott McCloud. And then, of course, my copy is. Here's all the covers and shit. Let me go back. That's what, some of the best part about this is the covers and shit. We go all the way back. I'm sorry if I keep on bumping the light here and there, everybody. Oh, it's Aardvark for a good chunk of this. Okay. All right, the covers. Based on Superman 146, there's cover number one. Cover number two is based on Fantastic 439. Of course, that's a EC cover. That's, of course, Elf Quest. This is, you know, Journey, of course. Uh, that's kind of Harvey-ish. This is more the spirit. Um, I'm assuming that's Steranko there. This would be number eight. What is eight? I'll have to actually look that one up. That's the one I can't get, can't just guess on. Famous one is number two fourteen by Frank Frazetta. Nine is Asterix. Ten is Cerebus High Society cover. Okay, I can see that now. That's of course America flag. Gals and pals. That's going to be Archie. I guess so. Yeah. Oh shit, it's coming loose. Oh fuck. I'll have to re glue that, but that's one issue with the trade this bit, but hell. It's a kick ass trade. I'm gonna get out of here. Hope everybody enjoyed that. Remember if you did, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe, all the other bullshit. Talk to everybody later. Bye bye.